which is similar to pond but without any fertilizer. Yes, I do know that it's time for bed. Clearly, I'm busy. What? I'm arguing with technology. Hi! Welcome to another video on the best genus on the planet, potentially the entire universe. Today I wanted to talk about Hoya microstemma and in all honesty, this could be the best Hoya that I smelled so far. Aside perhaps from Hoya Loki, but you know, in all fairness, that one smells like chocolate and you know how I feel about chocolate. Amazing. Typically, when I smell a Hoya, I'm reminded of some spring flowers and I can never pinpoint exactly which one, so I usually say hyacinth because that is the first thing that comes to my mind. And this one smells quite different. On the other hand, you have some Hoyas that are said to have, you know, not such a pleasant smell. Some people say it reminds them, well, of pee. I mean, on the bright side, at least, it's not number two. Are we really gonna go into a poop joke, Miro? Come on. Let's, let's stay on track here. Hoya microstemma unmistakably smells like vanilla, and if you are one of the people who like the smell of vanilla, then that is great for you. And if you are one of those people that don't, well, I, I don't really know how to talk to you. There is a slight floral undertone to the scent, but you will only smell it if you come close to the flower of this Hoya, but in general, if you keep it in an enclosed space like a greenhouse cabinet or perhaps a grow tent, you will definitely smell vanilla first. Before we go on, I do want to show you my plant, and you can see here, this is what it looks like, and the amazing flowers. If I can grab a hold of them, this is not very elegant. Just not going according to the plan. Okay, I think we have something there. I think you can better see what the flower looks like. Hoya microstemma was collected on the 14th of September 1909 in what was then known as German New Guinea. It was a time when New Guinea was divided between the British and German Empire and the Kingdom of Netherlands. Today we would know that territory as Papua New Guinea. It was collected in the northeastern part of the island and it was found blooming in the trees in Torricelli Mountains 800 meters above sea level. The plant was discovered and collected by German botanist and taxonomist Rudolf Schlechter. Schlechter started with botanical expeditions in 1891 when he was only 19. It almost sounds like it could be a lyric of a pop song. I guess to us today it seems like he was quite young, but perhaps in the late 19th and the beginning of the 20th century that was considered to be mature. Kind of like when young people today call someone in their 20s a dad, and I'm like, I, I don't accept that. When I think about it, it's actually nothing like that at all. It's best we go back to Schlechter. The purpose of his expeditions was to look for latex-producing plants and to investigate the caoutchouc industry. However, Schlechter was not as much interested in that as he was interested in orchids and Asclepidaceae family. In fact, Schlechter is credited to proposing nearly 1,000 species in the orchid family. After his expedition to South Africa and before embarking on future expeditions that will prove to be very significant for his career, Schlechter was in Berlin, and at that time he was very weak because he suffered from dysentery and from tropical illnesses. However, while he was staying in Berlin, he was hired by the German colonial department to lead an expedition into West Africa to look for more latex-producing plants. Clearly, the rubber was quite important back then. He spent following 20 years continuously visiting Sumatra, Java, Borneo, Sulawesi, Malaysia, Indonesia, Australia, and South Sea Islands. Quite a traveler. His last expedition was also his longest when he visited the Malay Archipelago, and he was there from 1906 to 1909. He was stationed in Papua New Guinea, but he also ventured to Hong Kong, Philippines, Sumatra, and Borneo. It was on this last expedition that he discovered Hoya microstemma. Schlechter spent the remaining of his life working in Berlin, and he even met the American botanist Oakes Ames, who is very significant for the Orchidaceae family because he contributed a lot to the systematics and to new discoveries within that family, which before him were very little known. Now, it is a bit of an understatement to say that Schlechter was not really a popular guy in his time. He is often described as strong-willed, he would present his opinions as facts, and they kind of called him insensitive, so not very popular. However, I do understand a bit of his character because if you consider the places he visited, the amount of plants that he collected, and that he spent most of his life in expeditions collecting plants, 
you can kind of see where he was coming from. I don't think that many people in that time were as prominent in botany as Schlechter was. And I do think that he would make even further contributions hadn't it been for, you know, the World War I and his tropical diseases and then, you know, before that his youth. The inconvenience. Unfortunately, a lot of his efforts were destroyed due to world wars. During the World War I, while he was still alive, he saw the collapse of latex industry in New Guinea, which he helped establish. However, more tragically, in my opinion, during the World War II, his collection that was part of the Berlin Herbarium was destroyed in 1943. Only several specimens survived that were on borrow, I think, in the British Herbarium. I think probably it was a good thing that he wasn't around to see that, because to see your entire life's work destroyed in the World War and, you know, just witnessing the World War, any of them, it, it really would be tragic. Today we would consider that he died very young. He died while he was 53 years old in 1925, and most likely the cause of his death were the lingering effects of all the tropical diseases. Hoime Christema was published several years after it was collected. It was published in Botanische Jahrbücher für Systematik, Pflanzengeschichte und Pflanzengeographie. This loosely translates to Botanical Yearbook for Plant Systematics, Plant History and Plant Geography and the issue in question is from April 1913. And I'm just saying this for you who aren't fluent in German like I clearly also am not. As you will be able to see, the specimen that Schlechter collected looks a little bit different than the specimen that I have, and that is because my specimen is a different clone collected by Natalie Simonson and it has an accession number NS11145. Natalie collected this particular clone in 2011 when she was in Papua New Guinea. And this clone was collected in Western, which is one of the largest provinces in Papua New Guinea, if not the largest. According to Natalie, the forest where this hoya was collected was scheduled to be cleared out. And I assume it is either for logging or mining because people... Unfortunate thing there, you know, aside from cleaning out the forest, is that this forest was also a host to a variety of species. And she says that she saw some Hoya species that have not been seen for 100 years, and possibly even some that have not been known to science. Apparently, Hoya microstema has not been found in the northern part of the island for over 100 years, and she found it in this part of the island. And what I find very interesting here is that Schlechter collected his specimen in the northeast East part of the island and Nathalie collected her specimen in the southern part of the island. So I assume this is probably why the plants look a bit different and why we have this different clone. If you would like to read more interesting stories like this, I suggest you join the Swedish Hoya Society and you can read similar stories in Hoya Bulletin. I will leave the link in the description below and you can decide if you want to join or not. Now, the leaves in this clone, to me, they look a bit more tear-shaped. I'm not sure if we can call that a tear shape. I guess we can. To me, they look a bit more pointy than the clone that Schlechter collected and then the other clones. And if you have a clone of Hoya microstema that doesn't look like mine, please let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear about it. Also to me, it seems that some other clones have more succulent leaves, but I really cannot say that because I didn't hold a different clone in my hands. And since you're clearly taking a break from the video, typing your comment down below, make sure to also hit the like button, subscribe button, and you know, it wouldn't hurt if you would hit the notification bell. But please don't type in the comment below why you're still not subscribed. I got my plant as a cutting in May of 2021 for my friend Carolina from Sweden. And back then I thought it kind of looked like a sensitive plant. It kind of looked fragile to me. However, that is very far from the truth. After growing it for about eight to nine months, I can tell you that this plant is quite resilient. I mean, it survived my underwatering mealybugs, spider mites, and whatnot, and it also bloomed within those eight months. In fact, I did not even give it any special conditions. It was staying on my Hoya wall shelf that now I repurposed for some other taller Hoyas under 20 watt light, and that was sufficient for it to bloom. And it wasn't even that close to the light. Plus, it's just a regular LED light from a hardware store, so, you know, bonus point for the plant. The flowers on this plant are quite small, which you can probably see for yourself. 
they are about six millimeters across. The Corolla is white with the edge slightly tugged back, but I also did read that it can be a bit pinkish and I assume probably if you expose it to higher light or maybe there are different clones that bloom a bit pinkish. To me, the Corona looks almost transparent towards the edges, but when you get closer to the center, it is a bit reddish and the center itself is yellow. The entire umbel is also not very big. It is about two centimeters wide. Now, when it comes to smell, I did read opinions of some people and they say that it doesn't smell, it doesn't have a scent, and I have to strongly disagree. It smells like vanilla 100%. And it's not just my opinion. I asked several other people and they confirmed that I'm not insane, at least when it comes to the smell. They definitely disagree when it comes to having so many Hoyas but we will not get into that. Anyways, they confirmed that it does smell like vanilla. My plant opened its flower buds on Sunday evening and currently it is Tuesday and it is 10.40 p.m. So it is still in bloom. However, I do have to say it's probably the last moment or we are in the last moments because the flowers are supposed to last from two to three days. I will tell you, I will write something here editing Miro here, write something, right when the flowers stopped existing, which is a overly complicated way to say how long the flowers lasted. The leaves on this plant are also not very big. The largest leaf on my plant is, well, first, not very big, but it is 1.4 centimeters wide and 2.8 centimeters long, and the petiole of the leaf is also very short. Now, one thing that I did notice is that sometimes this plant does make longer internodal spaces, which you can kind of see here. So, you know, sometimes it's a bit bushier, but typically they are larger. And you will see also in that publication that I attached that indeed it does make slightly larger internodal spaces. When it comes to the look of this plant, it's not really a hanging plant. I don't know, it doesn't fall maybe nicely. Um, I don't know what I would call this. It's a, how do you call when people have that? It's a, it's not a curly hair, it's wavy. It's like wavy hair. That's not what wavy hair looks like, Miro. When the leaves get more light, they will become slightly red on the margins, which I'm not sure if you can tell here. We can tell that they're a bit yellow, Miro, but yeah, you can kind of see here, they are slightly reddish. I did see some photos online of this plant where the leaves got a bit more red. However, I never really exposed my plant to that kind of light. I'm struggling now to put it back. In terms of growth, I would say that Hoya microstema is a decent grower. It doesn't grow very fast. There are certainly faster Hoyas, but it is not slow by any stretch of imagination. So you will not have to wait very long, but I do have to say that some other plants that are small leaved Hoyas that I got in May grew a whole lot more. And uh, there are some small leaved Hoyas that I got also in May that barely grew at all, which is Hoya lutophytica and Hoya carmelliae. Not a great review for those two. I grow my plant in a mixture of lava rock, zeolite, and pumice. It is similar to pond, but without fertilizer. However, I do add it each time I water the plant. Now, before this plant was in a mix of bark with some small rocks, cocoa peat, and I think some perlite. I actually repotted this plant while the buds were, you know, they were quite big. They were almost ready to open. And I'm quite surprised that they didn't blast on me, which is something that could have happened, but I guess I decided to be very brave. It's not something that I recommend you to do, but it goes to show you that this is quite a resilient plant because a lot of the Hoyas would not stand with that bullshit. As I just mentioned, I do fertilize it each time I water. I use either rainwater or my dehumidifier water because my tap water is very hard. It has a lot of calcium and the pH is quite high. However, it did get that tap water sometimes. I was, I was trying to be nice to the plant, so mostly it was rainwater. I use orchid fertilizer, which is 
a synthetic orchid fertilizer. It comes in a powdered form. I will leave the link in the description because people ask me about it. It is a fertilizer that I've been using for over a year and it works great. When it comes to temperatures, I did not have any issues, not even during the summer, which was extremely hot here. I keep it in my room and the temperature is about 20 to 30 degrees of Celsius, depending on the season. So that is around 68 to 86, I think, degrees of Fahrenheit. But, you know, I... I make up these conversions because they said these temperatures so many times, so I'm just trying to remember from memory, but it ain't that good. That, of course, is not to say that this plant will not do better in lower or higher temperatures, but I would just look at what is, you know, the most regular temperature in Papua New Guinea because I do think it will grow the best in those temperatures. So I think, you know, your normal room temperature will do just fine. That is all for today, and that is all that I know about Hoya microstema. In my opinion, it is a very easy Hoya to grow, and I do recommend you getting one, especially if you like that vanilla smell, and you better do. I would also like to take a moment to thank Julie Kennedy for helping me with the Hoya research for this video. Some information that I got were crucial. To the rest of you watching, leave a comment down below. What do you think about Hoya microstema? Do you find the flowers cute? because I do, I think they're very pretty. I definitely love small-leaved hoyas much, much more than before. You know, in the past, I would really appreciate the big, veiny leaves, but now I'm just really into these small and cute hoyas, especially because a lot of people don't think of something like that when they think of hoyas, they think of something with, you know, larger leaves, or they think of something that looks like carnosa, carry, or obobada, but very few people, I think, would think of something like this. Anyways, we are apparently rambling, so type the comment down below, make sure to hit the like button once again. Um, actually, no, don't hit it twice because then it doesn't count. Just hit it once, that is what you need to know. Hit the subscribe button, it would mean a lot, and thank you so much for spending this time with me. I hope this video was not too long, and I really just need to say goodbye. And have a nice day as well, we always want to say that. Okay, Miro. Wrap it up. I would like to take some time to thank my patrons. A massive shout out to my $5 patrons. One anonymous patron, Betsy Begonia, Bonnie Harris, Carrie, Cynthia Taylor, Danube Daniels, Estelle Farah, Houseplant Heather, Kelso, Kristen Sherwood, Mars B, Martina, Alif Perday, Melissa Walker, Nicole Ferranti, Nicole and Caleb of Schleif Tropical, Speed J, Plans by Misha, Rachel Collat Conroy, Robin L. Jennings, Stephanie H2O, Spinach Geek, Tanya, TJWO, Vicky Dingler, Wojta Takac, Wendy Foreman, and Zlokov Nipponi. A big thank you to my $3 patrons, Angelina Farna, April Arroyo, Brana Phillips, Catherine G, Claudia L, Jerry's Garden, Lisa Helling, Lori Murphy, Morgan Kennedy, Nella, Nerdy, Kathy, Nikki, Pantalania, Ringlove, Ruby, and Shayla Mason Casper. And thank you to my $1 patrons, Caroline, Lorraine Monreal, Marissa Summerfield, Ryan Lambert, and Tang Watanas Cool. Thank you all so much for your incredible support. I hope you enjoyed watching the video, and I hope you have a lovely day. See you soon. Bye. <laughs> that was a long pause.